Hey there guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome back to week three of the UPBA. Uh, this week we are up against someone whose name I cannot remember. Great start to the video. I haven't got the um haven't got the spreadsheet open in front of me. Uh, we're up against the Arkansas Razor Winds, coached by JB. West side. Now, um, you can see the team matchup is in front of you uh, on the screen. However, I would recommend you check out the team builder. Fingers crossed, I do do a team builder because um, I'm re recording this before I do a team builder. If I don't do one, I'm sorry. I'll try and remember to leave a pokey paste in the description below. Um, quick overview of my opponent's draft <coughs> is Tapu Koko, Latios, Ferrothorn, Horlucha, Arcanine, Snorlax, Swampert, Cofagrigus, Cryogonal, Mega Absol, and Gofarita. Um, Again, check out the team builder if you want to see more uh, sort of in-depth analysis of the team I've bought. But from memory, what I have bought this week is Specially Defensive uh, Rotom Heat, uh, Choice Scarf, Adamant, Mold Breaker, Excadrill, even though I had Tyranitar. Um, we have got Bulky Reuniclus. We have got uh, Max Attack AV uh, Tyranitar. We have got Bulky Offensive uh, Gardevoir and then a relatively normal Jolly Mega Lop with Toxic as well as High Jump Kick Return and Drain Punch. Um, looking at my opponent's team, he does decide to bring the Snorlax, Ferrothorn, Tapu Koko, Holucha, Arcanine and Kofagrigus. Um, first thing that I knew from team building, let alone, you know, just looking at this matchup I have in front of me, I knew that Rotom Heat was going to be incredibly important for me this game because it checks his Ferrothorn, it checks his Tapu Koko and it checks the Arcanine. Um, I can threaten Holucha out with Volt Switch. It just has a fantastic matchup. We didn't bring any ground types, didn't bring any electric immunities, especially with the um, electric terrain uh, possibility. Then Volt Switch could potentially be doing a lot. Um, Overheat is always going to be scaling the Ferrothorn out. And I do have Shadow Ball as well for the Latios, which I didn't decide to bring. Uh, otherwise, I just kind of got walled by it. Um, Choice Scarf X Drill, Earthquake hits his whole entire draft, other than the Horlucha. He does have Latios again, which I wanted to hit, but he didn't bring. Um, defensive Reuniclus is there for any uh, any Horlucha set that gets out of hand. Horlucha was a real threat to me in this game because of Lop and Tyranitar. Lop is definitely one of my win conditions as well. Uh, Tyranitar is there to take on Tapu Koko in case Rome Heat has to do too much work, um, and he can't really kill like AV Tyranitar that, that easily. Um, Gardevoir is there is also a backup for Horlucha. I was really scared of Horlucha as you can probably tell. Because um, I don't think there's any moves that it has that can potentially one hit KO me. Um, other than maybe Poison Jab at plus two, maybe plus four. I can't remember the Calc off the top of my head. And as you can see, Lop against this team, if I can get some chip damage with Stealth Rocks on his whole team, it just dies to either Fighting or Normal Stab. All I need to do is Toxic the Coffee, I can't say his name, Coffee Grigus, um, or chip it down with other means like Tyranitar, or Excadrill, or even Rome Heat. Um, and once that's done, and as long as I don't let it pain split, then we should be good to go with Megalop for the cleanup. So that's pretty much it. As you can see though, I do decide to lead with my Rome Heat, and my opponent does decide to lead with the Snorlax. Um, I'm just waiting for him to chuck the ball out so I can actually commentate this game because I've gone way ahead of myself. So I'm going to lead with Rotom Heat because I did expect maybe a Tapu Koko lead because Tapu Koko is a very safe lead uh, in this matchup. Um, now, I'm predicting my opponent to switch out here. I don't want him to... Well, I was thinking he wouldn't want to take any kind of trick. Um, but he does decide to switch out into his Arcanine. Not really sure if he was expecting me to click a fire move or, or what. Um, but I do click Volt Switch. I don't expect him to pick that, I expect him to be Gluttony, but it actually turns out it's an Assault Vest Arcanine, uh, not Arcanine, Snorlax. So I have my window open so you can hear random banging noises, that's why. Um, but I do bring in my extra drill here because I think it's a free Earthquake. Um, I do click Earthquake and the Arcanine does appear to actually be Sugarberry, which is upsetting because this now means this Arcanine could just probably potentially kill me, or at least do a massive amount of damage, but my opponent does actually instead uh, decide to click Will-O-Wisp, which is annoying. And at the time I thought I had Heal Bell on my Gardevoir, but I don't, I have Wish instead. So, Excadrill is burnt, but it could still be used in the late game to kill this thing. It could be useful to kill the Tapu Koko as well. Um, but I do decide to switch out here, because he's now got a free switch into either Horlucha or the Ferrothorn. So I'm going to switch into my Rotom, as he does switch out into the Ferrothorn, so I do get that prediction correct. 
And you'll see that a lot of the time I do manage to get my predictions of Rotom Heat correct, which allows me to keep momentum in this game. It's huge. Um, he does switch back into his uh, Snorlax, now not fearing the Rotom Heat as much. Now he probably knows I'm not a choice variant of trick. Um, and that does nothing. Originally I wondered if it was just bulky, but then I did the calcs and realised it was AV. So I'm going to go into Mega Lot to scare this thing. He hasn't got a high jump kick switching at all on his team. Um, unless Coco is scarfed, it will take one and then kill me next turn potentially. But he has to hope I miss basically. Um, I'm going to predict the Kofagriga switch. Kofagriga is like the most obvious switch in his team. Because nothing else can take a fighting into normal type move. Nothing can outspeed me unless it's scarfed. And if it's scarfed, it's not going to take two. So I do click Toxic though because I'm, I'm pretty confident he's going into Kofag here at this point. He's not going to sack his Snorlax off. Because I do have a Reuniclus and I do have a Gardevoir and I do have Rotom, which are all walled by it incredibly well. Um, but I do get the Toxic off and I'm going to switch out here predicting the Will O Wisp and go back into my Rotom. And as you'll see, I do get that correct. There's also the chance he might have clicked um, Toxic Spikes. So going back into Rotom with Defog on it would be really nice. I wouldn't have to let anything get poisoned. Um, but as my opponent hasn't got any ground types, I'm going to put Volt Switch here because I'm expecting him to switch out. If he doesn't, um, then that's more chip damage on the Kofag, and that's all I need for Lock to win. So I do Volt Switch out on the uh, Snorlax. I'm going to go back into Mega Lock because High Jump Kick is, is free at this point, as long as I don't miss and I do manage to hit it. I can't click Drain Punch because if he is max defense, then there's a chance he'll live. Um, but High Jump Kick is too much to kill at any sort of, any sort of range, uh, unless he's trouble. Saying that, I think Chuffle might have even had a chance to still kill through that, but um, yeah, the Snorlax goes down, and I'm surprised he let that thing die. Uh, the way he brings in Ferrothorn here, it sh screams he's also Chuffle on this, um, although he wasn't Chuffle on Snorlax in the end. Uh, and he's going to click Thunder Wave, so I do get the prediction correct again, and I go into my room. He also covered the Stealth Rock or Spike play that he might have gone for. Just switch out, and once again, I'm just going to freely click, uh, freely click, Volt Switch. No, I don't I click Overheat this turn, sorry because he really doesn't have a good switch into it. Um, and that overheat does absolutely tons of damage. So, next turn I know that this thing is going to pick plane split, and everything on my team is really healthy. I don't want Rotom taking any unnecessary damage, so I'm going to have to go into my Tyranitar here, because Tyranitar could potentially scare this thing into being Pursuit Trapped. I'm not actually carrying Pursuit. Um, I will reveal at this point that I am Unnerve rather than Sandstream, which probably should indicate I'm maybe a bit more of an offensive variant of... Uh, Tyranitar, but he's going to pain split and get all his health back, uh, and I'm going to get down to just above half. But the unnerve is going to come into play, my prep was spot on. I'm going to go for crunch. I don't know if my opponent didn't see this, uh, and that's why he left it in, but he should have probably noticed that there was no sand. Um, but the unnerve does kill this thing, and he was actually Colberberry, so the unnerve did really help there. Um, so co down goes Kofag, and now my opponent really doesn't have anything for Lop at this point. He's going to go into the Ferrothorn. Um, I am going to switch out into Tyranitar around because the AV means I could potentially take on the attack Coco still and just kill that thing with Earthquake, especially as uh, Excadrill is now weak. I do switch into Rotom and unfortunately my opponent does go for knockoff. Rotom again was a safe switch because if you want rocks, uh, Leech Seed, Spikes, Gyro Ball, Leech Seed, none of them did any damage to me. Just get back into his Arcanine, which is really weak, um, and I do click the Shadow Ball to cover this, um, but unfortunately it doesn't quite kill the Arcanine. And Arcanine is going to be faster than me on the next turn and click the one Sun. But what this does mean is I can get a slow Volt Switch off, um, which allows me some momentum in this game, which is really nice, um, and that means I can get into my Excadrill and scare this thing out. Um, but what I'm actually going to do with Excadrill is I'm going to decide to get my rocks up because. Lucha, while it's almost definitely most likely Electric Seed, I don't want that thing being Focus Sash to screw the game up for me. Um, and also help chip down the Tapu Koko and bring that into range for Mega Lock. Potentially late game now, Excadrill is burned. Um, I do click Stealth Rocks. And rather unfortunately here, my opponent does actually get a fun for a crit. I say unfortunately, actually it really helped me in the game. Uh, it gives me a free switch into Lop, and again, he can't switch into anything uh, with Stealth Rocks up at this point. Um, so I'm going to bring in Lop, like I said, and I'm just going to click Return, I believe, because there's no need for me to click the Fighting Type move at this point, because if he then goes into his um, Ferrothorn on the next turn, or well, this turn even, I will just switch out into Rotom again, and we'll go on from there. So this time he's going to go into his Tapu Koko. I'm going to click Return here, thinking that Megalop isn't as important anymore, and if he Scarf Modest, uh, he can't kill me with Dazzling Gleam anyway, thanks to my natural bulk. 
Um, so I do click return when I realise he's not Scarf, which is brilliant. This means extra drill, uh, no, sorry, extra dread, um, means I should be able to come in and revenge kill this being with Rune. But he's However, he here reveals Supersonic Sky Strike. I saw that. I was like, okay, free third, that's fine. However, his attack goes up sharply, and he reveals the mirror move, which is obviously Breakneck Blitz. And I am absolutely crapping myself at this point. He's revealed to be Physical Attack of Coco. Um, he's gonna have. We've well, got Mirror Move, not Brave Bird. He's gonna have an Electric Coverage, I would assume, just to take advantage of the Electric Terrain. He's gonna have U Turn, and then it could be any other move. Could probably be Iron Head for Tyranitar. Rotom Heat is my only hope at this point, and it's just a really good job I did manage to keep this thing as healthy as I did, because Volt Switch is gonna uh, is gonna live, and Volt Switch is gonna be able to take out Tapu Coco. And I don't mind keeping Rotom around this uh, at this low amount of health, because I can potentially get the Wish off with Gardevoir uh, and heal that thing up. So it's really good that I didn't let my opponent get Stealth Box up this game, otherwise I probably would have just flat out lost the game there and then. Um, but in comes the Ferrothorn, that's fine by me. I have will -O on this. Um, Gardevoir, and the fact I'm tracing Iron Barbs means if he wants to Gyro Ball me, that's absolutely fine. I'm a bulky set, like I said, so Gyro Ball is going to be doing less damage to me. I do miss the first Willow, which is annoying, because my opponent is now going to do more than half to me. If I'd have got the Burn off, it would have done half that amount, and I would have been able to have stalled this thing out more and more. Um, but I believe, I don't think I have Focus Blast, I think I have Psy Shock and Shadow Ball on this set. I'm going to give a Willow again, just to chip this thing down. Um, and I'm pretty sure at this point my opponent doesn't have Stealth Rock on this thing. Um, and if he does, he doesn't ever click it. He's deciding to kill my guy for rather than set up rocks. Which, I, if he had rocks, I'm surprised he didn't click it. Because that would have killed my right heat on switching. Um, but I think this turn, before I die, I'm going to click Wish. And this pretty much ensures me the game at this point. Because I don't think Holucha can kill uh, Rotom Heat in one turn. And Volta could be doing a ton of damage to it. Unfortunately, the electric terrain is around long enough, or... No, sorry, it's not, I tell a lie. Um, the fact he's also decided to keep this Ferrothorn in is really good for me, because I expected the Hall to come in at some point, um, just to get the electric seed off. But he doesn't decide to do that, and the electric terrain actually disappears here, which means that Hall isn't going to be able to get the Unburdened Boost off with the electric seed, which is in fact what it had. Um, I'm pretty confident because I've been knocked off, and because my opponent only has Gyro Ball, I can take either hit with Rotom Heat, and I will survive, and I will get the uh, Wish off, mainly because of the burn, and Rotom Heat is now in a really good position again. I didn't want to click Overheat because I didn't want to drop my special attack. I'm going to click Shadow Ball twice. I don't think Shadow Ball kills this thing, I think the burn from Gardevoir kills this thing. Yeah, he survives on just a tiny amount, even after a crit, um, but Knock Off is doing no damage to me because I have no item and he is burnt. And this means his last Pokemon is indeed the Hall Lucha, which... The fact I have Rotom Heat in means that he can't click Sword Dance in front of me. He doesn't know if I have Thunderbolt, he doesn't know what my fourth move is because I haven't had to reveal it at this point. Um, but he does just decide to click High Jump Kick, which is absolutely fine by me. I'm fine to let Rotom Heat down. Rotom Heat was absolutely incredible in this game. He was the catalyst, he was the one that kept this game going for me. I now have a full health Reuniclus. I am Colberberry. Um, not sure if this thing even gets a knockoff to be fair. Um, but it could have had X's, I think it learns that. He does go for the plus two because it is his only saving grace. It's the only way he can win this game. But I'm going to click side shot. Even though I have no investment, that is going to absolutely destroy the whole Lucha. And that is going to be the game. So, after losing 1 0 last week to Jack, we are now back on track after beating JB Westside 2 0 uh, in week three. So, we are now 2 1. And I believe we're sitting rather pretty in fourth place out of 16 teams, which is awesome. So, uh, yeah, good game. To my opponent James that was a really good game I did enjoy that I honestly think I had a good match up this week again and that made things a bit easier for me but that Tapu Coco really had me sweating I was not expecting a physical set at all um, but guys if you did enjoy this video make sure you leave a like uh, leave some comments on how you thought the game went make sure you check out the links for James and all the other coaches in the description below uh, hopefully I'm able to put Poke Paste in there as well so you can look at the team but hopefully there's also a team builder live at this point thank you for watching and I'll see you later bye